Okay, today I intend to show you all um, the most basics of the most basic of basics is just getting the illusion of distance. Um, all I can say is if you have say whoops start with circle and okay if this is a ball and I want the ball to get closer you just draw it larger. Right? Feel like getting feel like it's getting bigger? It's pretty simple. Now by itself, uh, it's hard to tell how far away this ball is. Uh, the only way you can tell how far the ball is is if you compare it against another uh, version of the ball, one that's near and one that's far. Uh, the way the way the human perception works is all on comparison, uh, especially if you only have uh, one image, one eye, you don't have binocular perception, you must compare one thing to the other. So by itself, it's just a circle, but when you can have when you have something else to compare it against suddenly it's a ball sometimes suddenly it seems as if one is getting closer than the other so even a line lines just a line but if I can make another line feels like it gets closer so this illusion is only possible when you have two lines so anytime you want to get the sensation of depth what you have to do is you have to have one thing and you have to take that same thing and you must draw it again this time differently you draw in this case I've just made it larger and I've shifted it now in the case of um, an object getting closer I mean an object getting closer near or sliding this is just translation this is just objects traveling through space. I mean this is traveling through space, that's traveling through space. And the difficulty in drawing is how do you get it to appear as, like people are very good at making it seem as if an object is traveling across the line of sight, right? Um, that, that's pretty easy, you just slide things sideways. Now how do you make something appear as if it comes directly at the line of sight is you simply make it look, you know, get make it get larger. Um, if something is down in the corner, it still travels directly at the line of sight. And actually, let's see if I do it like that. See that? It doesn't, my hand isn't really moving anywhere. It simply looks like it's getting larger. Okay? So, you have to be able to isolate these. There, see that? My hand just looks like it's getting larger, but it doesn't look like it's moving side to side. So, you have to isolate side to side movement versus the scaling action that occurs when things get closer. So when you learn to isolate these two things, that means that if an object is getting closer but not moving directly at the camera like this, you'll get a combination of sliding and scaling. Okay, so that's a combination movement. Now, let's see. So in the case of this, if we wanted to make an object to come directly at us, then there. It's sitting up in the corner of the screen. It's not dead center, but it is coming right at us. On the other hand, if I wanted to, let's see, if I wanted to make a version of this which came across the field of vision and came at us at the same time, there. So you see the difference between this little, little one coming at us and this one moving across. So it requires that you compare. You have to look at two things, not just one thing. Your, your eye cannot be focused on one point in space. It's, it's not possible to get the sense of depth there. Now it's again, it's moving across our field of vision and it's also getting closer at the same time. I can throw in additional frames. Okay, so you get that sense of depth only through the comparison. It's a lot easier when you see, you know, one at a time because your eye can only, your eye, your eye's attention is drawn to one object, then the next object, then to the next object. That's why you get the sense of depth and illusion. But if I take this drawing and I put them all together, the only way you won't, you'll lose a sense of your, your sense of depth perception if you only stare at one line. 
you have to compare this line with this line with this line in order to be able to com to sense depth. Okay. Uh, shoot, I gotta delete a frame. Oh, right. Didn't assign a hotkey for that. Okay. Now, um, the same thing can be said for points. I mean, if you can do it to a line, if you can do it the same thing to a line, you know, make it appear as if a line is getting closer, um, or make it appear as if a line is simply sliding across our point of view, or I can make it appear as if this line is simply getting closer but not sliding. There. Okay. The same thing can be done that you do for lines can be done for points. So a little point can become a big point. So it can get closer. Or it can do a combination move. It can move across. And another combination move. So now you get the sense that everything is getting closer. And again, you have to compare. You have to compare this point with this point, this point with that point. You have to compare. It's the only way that you can get a sense of depth. So you control it based on the size at which you draw things and the amount that you make them diverge from their point. So if I wanted to draw a box, I might start with a line like this. But then I have to create another line there. Now I can, now that I see that, I can figure out, well, what happens if I wanted to take this line and rotate it? Right? So if you were able to make a square, you have to be able to take that same square and take one of these lines and make it larger. You see that sense of movement, that sense of depth, that change in position? only possible if you compare one thing to the other. So now you get that sense of the box. You have to compare. So whenever I draw boxes, I might draw one, one side, but then I can look at a line and I can look at the bottom line and look at this line, look at that line. So it's That's how you do it. And the same thing can be said for a disk. If I made a, you know, like a, a coin, I can make the coin come closer by, there, it seems to get closer. If I wanted to make a cylinder, same deal, I have to make the coin appear to travel through space. So let's see if I wanted if I wanted this to be the, the back side and I wanted this, this this thing to go further away, then I'll have to draw it smaller and I'll have to shift it. So that's how I make the cylinder shape. Only possible by comparing one thing to the other. Okay. Um Let's see what else. So whenever I do any freeform sketching, I will look at one line and I will have to scale the lines up whenever I want things to get closer. If I want them to, to travel directly towards the camera, then I have to I have to diverge them like that. So we're looking on the inside of a cylinder now. We're looking inside a tube. If we want the tube to turn then I can't use a circle because a circle is what you'll see if, well, it's quite obvious. So you see a circle straight on like that, right? Let's get this. Circle straight on like that. So if we were to slide the circle towards us, like the circle can only travel. If you want to do a cylinder, it's going to slide perpendicularly to the movement. So now it turns into an ellipse. I mean, it's pretty dead simple stuff. It's obvious.